Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the 12th and final episode of the first season of Shinigami Bochan Tokuro Maid. Last episode we dropped that pretty pretty big reveal near the end of the episode where it seems like Alice's mom is still alive, like sleeping, like probably some kind of witch, curse, magic, sleeping beauty sort of sort of thing is probably going on there, but she, she's alive, you know. I can't remember exactly what if they, if they ever told us anything specific on what happened to her or that she just disappeared. I don't quite remember that. But, uh, you know, either way, we, we got most, most of the answer here. So hopefully we can get her wakey-wakey and hang out with Alice and that, that would be nice. So Because we got some flashback stuff with, like, little Alice and big Alice Mama, and those were enjoyable. So if we could get some of that, like, in the current timeline with the, you know, little bigger Alice, that, that would be nice. But... But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like a second season and uh, even the third season's airing right now, I believe. So, you know, definitely more to cover. But for now, we're going to finish off episode, episode, blah, season one. So let's jump in in three, two, one, play. I actually had to restart this reaction because I accidentally loaded up episode 11 instead. <laughs> I was like, why does it look so familiar? Just as some kind of flashback, but no. It, it was not. <laughs> Guy needs to invest in an own a hole for sure. Oh yeah, we had that too. That's a big thing as well. Into the lights. Nervous? <clears throat> yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about that too. It's probably nothing good. <laughs> okay. Did we did we have to be on the bucket? So now we get to watch the opening a second time. Which is fine. It's, it's a nice opening. <laughs> gonna trim your claws soon. I was talking to my cat if that if that wasn't clear. Because you know he's on my lap. He's always on my lap. Also, I'll sometimes kick him off my lap, and he jumps back on two minutes later. As if he doesn't understand that my lap could only handle his fat butt so for so long. You know, I kind of wish we would see his curse be used more in the show. Like, it feels like it's been a minute since we've seen him, like, touch something and kill it. And I think most of what we've seen are just, like, plants. I just feel like, you know, that would help keep the curse and how serious it is, like, in the mind of the audience. Together with the Duke. Bochan to Ishoni. I'm just really uneasy about this. From the shots we've gotten of her, she does not seem very pleasant. Yeah, we, we can't do it. The desire to comfort him is there, but... I think you should. I think I think that'll make a good difference. <laughs> Someone to advocate for Bochan to to mother. <laughs> I 
you know that feeling, you know, about school. <laughs> Yeah, there's no change in that. Okay, yeah, now I'm definitely nervous how that's how how that would go. Uh. Yeah, and yeah, you guys still just chill here. <laughs> Cough knows how to have. True fun. <laughs> I, I knew she was going to say that. Looks like we've arrived, and I still feel pretty nervous. I still remember back when his uh, friend first came over in like episode one or two. Emoto, Viola. Uh, <laughs> that's concerning. Viola really, Viola really does make some of these just mesugaki kind of faces. Just... Ganba. <laughs> Hey, there's the second son. Yeah, they are a little bit uh, uneasy being near the the death the death kid. I mean, none of that's surprising. Sorry, sorry, I complimented you. Uh, there's her voice. And there she is. We can't exactly give her a hug or anything. But... Ten years. Give me a few more years. I, I got this. Told you to go away, son. Nice, nice chat, mom. Good, good to see you. I love you. That's her kind mode. <laughs> uh, fair enough. I mean, I guess she didn't insult him or anything, so I guess it was somewhat nice. <laughs> Much of a reception for Alice. <laughs> Can I have my cheeks back, ma'am? Understandable. Huh. 
Uh, oh, okay. Uh, that's a... She definitely had one hell of a reaction to shout on though. How close are we talking? Like, uh, just, just, just curious. <laughs> it's a nice picture. I mean, I'll, uh, I mean, I get it. Now that she's so much bigger, she probably does look a lot like her. I mean, no probably to it. She clearly does. I thought we could bang, you know, before I had my chat with mom. Things have not been going well. Mother didn't really say much to me. The staff seems like they don't want to be near me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I get it. I mean, what can I do without killing you? Uh, getting a little bit too close. You're gonna knock over my water. I guess that's nice. <laughs> My cat just sprawled out laying on my table now. <laughs> Maybe next time. But yeah, I feel like there's the only reason the mother brought him here was to just officially tell him that he's like, you know... She's given up on him, essentially. That's how it works. <laughs> and what's with that bunny, bunny hood? <laughs> okay. Is that a grave? Okay, it was. Whose grave is it? As you do. <laughs> Look at those little hands. There it is. Apparently somebody else wanted that four leaf clover. I mean, you could just have the clover. No need to be a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be memorable. She done well. I still don't get why the person cursed him, though. <laughs> oh, mother. Go, go, again, you. I miss... I guess she was nicer there.
Yeah, unlike you, she's uh, <laughs> she's always around her. Definitely a possibility. <laughs> Gonna set the wire next to you. Don't knock it off. Hello, Mother. Good and far away from me as possible. <laughs> Son of mine. <laughs> yeah, world's different than usual dinner time. Uh, I can just feel the, the atmosphere. <laughs> Shaking. <laughs> that was a nice touch. It was subtle, but you, yeah, it was clear there. Right. And like I figured, this is most likely going to talk about the succession. You know, at least we were, were given some time. I thought time was up, but... I'd like to impregnate her. Dionne. <laughs> oh, that Dionne, you could really feel it. Be careful, she might steal her from you. <laughs> Did you get, was it that obvious? I am entirely serious. Yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> I knew this was coming, but it still hurts to hear. Tell her. <laughs> like a princess in a tower. She is a goddess for sure. And he's going all out here. <laughs> My man. There we go. And he just said everything right there. Yeah, I'll go home now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not staying here. <laughs> yeah, he told you. Yeah. I had a feeling she respect that to a certain degree. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
she probably wanted to have a thing with Shadon, but, you know, couldn't make things happen. So, trying to make the same for him. Too bad she couldn't have been there to watch that. I would have loved to see her reaction to it. Viola just smiling in the background. Yes, our home. <laughs> Bye, Viola. I'll miss you. Yeah, I would have done the same thing for this woman. <laughs> I mean, just look at that face. Yeah, that was a great ending to an episode, I mean, to the season. Yeah, it's moving. <laughs> All right, that didn't work out for you, did it? Okay, there's more. Yeah, basically a time limit. An ultimatum. Look, we actually have a minute or so left. <laughs> that wouldn't be, there would be no point, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're telling her. Okay. <laughs> well, that ain't true. Well, I guess I think what she said was before the big declaration. <laughs> Two left. <laughs> I'll ask you what they're doing there. Yeah. No. The heart. <laughs> oh, the heart. Well, we knocked him out. My cat wants out, but I'm kind of waiting for this to end first. In front of the full moon. <laughs> and that's that. I'll be right back. Okay, that was the 12th and final episode of the first season of Shinigami Bochan to Kuromaid. <laughs> this is a pretty good episode, pretty good finale to the season, I, I would say. You know, because one thing I was thinking about is like, how final can this really be? Because there's no way we were, we were going to cure the curse in this episode. 
that would be silly. Like, it'd be probably a pretty bad show if they just, like, rushed it for the last episode. Like, that, especially knowing that there are, you know, more seasons ahead. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I was wondering what they would do. And I definitely like what they did, you know. They, they they brought him back to the main house so he could kind of confront some things, you know. Confront his past, confront the mother. Bring in Alice along, which I think was a good a good choice. She didn't end up doing too much, really. I mean, the biggest thing involving her was was uh, the mother misinterpreting, you know, mistaking her for uh, Sharon, you know, the mother. That was a pretty big deal. Really let us see how much, how important Sharon was, is to, to her. Right, so that was a pretty big deal. But... But, uh, yeah, pretty much because one of the things that the show has been kind of really bringing up the past few episodes or so is the idea that, yeah, Alice is just a maid. There's a status thing here. He's supposed to be the head of this this big, important family. You know, he's supposed to presumably marry someone of similar status. You know, I think that's usually how these things kind of go. So him being together with Alice would not really be considered acceptable on that, on that basis. So that was always going to be a little bit of an issue, and we got to have that kind of be confronted here. Because uh, he says something about liking Alice, you know, to the mother. I don't know exactly what he said because it mostly was the, the the second part, you know, where he really goes goes after her. That uh, stuck in my head. But he said something about that where she just tried to reject it. But he he did not back down. No. He um, proudly stood up there, raised his voice very solid, concisely, passionately, explained his, his, his opinions, his position, you know, his feelings for Alice to her, not letting her you know, squander them or anything like that. I did enjoy Viola's little reaction, though. You know, the comments about him talking quickly or whatever. But, uh, so, you know, ensuring a little bit of levity into the scene. But he just took his leave after that. In which case, yeah, we got a little bit of smile from Mother because I knew I knew she would definitely yeah, respect it to a degree, for sure. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, as far as, like, back to the finale thing... What they ended up doing was giving us a time limit, right? Because we already had pretty pretty big stakes with uh, you know the death curse and all that, having to get it lifted to be able to live any semblance of a normal life to to get his position back and all that. But so you couldn't really go up from there as far as changing circumstances unless you narrow the window, the the time frame, right? So now not only does he have to get cured, he has to get cured quick, like real quick. So that definitely changes things, you know. So, yeah, I think that was a pretty good decision as far as changing things without, like, just quickly curing him or whatever. But as far as the curse itself, we didn't really get too much information. They went to the place where he originally got cursed. We saw a little bit of the person that, that cursed him, clearly a female, you know, clearly busty. That could be a few different women in the show, though, right? Like, I, I don't think we got anything even, was even remotely looking like a reason, though. Like, he was just in front of the, in front of the grave, grabbing a four-leaf clover... Some witch didn't like that and cursed him, I guess. Hopefully we can at some point get a little bit of information, more information about the motivation behind that. Because, like, because it comes across as a malice-fueled thing, but I don't know if he did anything that would incite that. So maybe it was just a witch trying to teach him some kind of life lesson by making him depressed for, ten, you know, a decade or so. You know, have an absolute horrendous childhood that he'll never get back. That seems like a little bit of a stretch, but like I don't, I don't know really what the reasoning was. So hopefully we can get a good answer on that. But like I said, I really enjoyed him just saying things clearly to the mother, for sure. You even had, the, even had the the card game at the end there, which is again kind of alluding to the the choice: do you choose the king to to, to have the power? You know, to the, 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 the position in the family, or do you choose your love for Alice, you know? So, I think we all know what he would choose, right? But Alice also doesn't want him to throw 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 away, you know, the, the, the great future he would otherwise have. So, that's kind of the big emotional conflict there. But I'm sure we'll get, that, get all that resolved soon enough, eventually. It was cool getting to see Biola, like... At, at her house, you know, at the main house. Because having her come over is one thing. Going over to her place is, is another. So. And the, and the staff members. I did enjoy how there was, like, no over-the-top reaction to the, the Shinigami, the death Bochan being around. Like, 
obviously when they, when he was walking by, they they were sweating bullets because of course they are, you know. But they they try to remain professional, so there's no like, oh god, he got some somewhat close to me. Oh no, like there's nothing like that. So I enjoyed that. Even the uh, the dinner scene, I think it was, where you could clearly hear the plate like shaking. Again, it wasn't like over the top, you know, shaking just like. It was enough, you know, where you could tell what was going on. Everyone could tell what was going on in the audience. Bochan, you know. That there was some fear there, was some, some fear there, but still just trying to do their job to the best of their abilities. I, I like that. Very realistic. Very understandable. But uh, yeah, I think that's about all to say on the episode. I thought I thought it was a really good finale, you know, for a season one. Like, obviously, if this was the only season, it wouldn't be a good finale because the, the curse hadn't been resolved yet. But for a season one, I think, I think it's good. But, you know, the fact that we do have a season three does kind of spoil a little bit that it's not going to get resolved in season two, most likely. That's not that's not the show's fault or anything. Just my fault for being late to the late to the party. But just something I thought I'd mention because <laughs> I can I can kind of assume that, yeah, he's not going to get cured in season two. But let's see, yeah. but yeah, do you have any thoughts to share about the show as a, or the season as a whole? Really, not too much. I mean, Bo Chan, he is a pretty serviceable protagonist. You know, I have no real complaints about him. Obviously, he's a bit of a, a gloomy kid, which is entirely understandable. Uh, but then there's Alice, who is just amazing. I mean, beautiful blonde hair, blue eyes. Very kind, very clearly loves Bochan, but she also teases him, which is fun to watch, you know. But also she can't touch him, so she's limited in what she can do. So, you know, I like to think that some of what she does is kind of overcompensating for that. She can't touch him, so she tries to rile up him in, in any visual kind of way that she can. So, you know, even that stuff could become more understandable if you kind of think of it in those terms, you know. You can't really do, you can't really do much with him intimacy-wise, so you, you, you do what you can. So... Can't blame her too much for the Sekuhara, but but yeah, she's always she's always a you know happy, good spirits, pleasant person to be around, and then you know just perfect love interest for sure. Then we have Viola, the sister, who's a lot of fun. You know, she's she's just peak Emoto. You know, just has that Kusogaki energy sometimes. Just a little bit of a troublemaker, but she of course loves her brother and all that. But and then we have a uh, cough. The, uh, one of our only, like, um, you know, friends, like, not like staff, not like love interest or family, like just, just a friend, you know, somebody you got to, got, got to meet up with and hang out with sometimes, come over for tea sometimes, because we had the one friend come over early on, early on, early on in the show, but that was never gonna, he was, he stopped being his friend before then, right? Like, he wanted nothing to do with him. He was there out of obligation, so, you know, being able to get real friends with Zion and Cuff, which is cool. And they have their own dynamic because they're childhood friends and stuff. So I think they were a pretty good little addition to the show. And then, of course, our uh, our butler dude. He, he's cool, you know. Also, the love interest for, for Friola, which is a little bit weird. But, you know, whatever. Nothing's ever going to happen on that front. But it is amusing. I mean, could you imagine if you actually did reciprocate our feelings? <laughs> that would that would That would be very weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> But again, it would be entertaining. You could just imagine just how Bo Chan would feel about that. But let's not go too far down that rabbit hole. But yeah, I don't really have too much to say about uh, about the episode, really, about the sh- about the season. Uh, other than that, it was definitely definitely good, definitely enjoyable. It has a little bit of that uh, tak- uh, what's that show called? Uh, teasing Master K- K- Takagi. You know, uh, I can't I can't remember the Japanese title for the show, but it has a little bit of that energy too. Obviously, not. Not quite the same kind of show, but it has some hidden design of similarities. So I get a little bit of nostalgic for that show as a result. But but yeah, good stuff. I'm glad we have a couple more seasons left and I look forward to watching more. And I certainly will be active more on the channel. So if you enjoyed that, please click the like button and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.